Okay, Art of Sports here with Cub Swanson here at uh, your gym opening, man, UFC yeah. Costa Mesa. Tell us about this facility. It's huge. looks beautiful. Uh, tell us about this place. Well, me and, uh, me and Michael Bisbing, we're both trying to do our own uh, UFC gyms, and uh, this opportunity here in Costa Mesa popped up, and they presented it to us that we'd partner up on it. And uh, we, it was a no-brainer. Uh, you know, it was the first time two UFC athletes have, you know, come together on a gym. So we thought, like, hey, you know, uh, if you're going to build something, might as well build it the best you, the best you can. So uh, we, we found this, this spot in its old uh, uh, Mitsubishi dealership. So it's kind of a crazy layout, very unique. Um, a good out, indoor-outdoor area. Then the indoor area is awesome. And uh, we're proud of what we built and, and uh, happy to be open. It's uh, coming at a great time for both of you guys, man. You guys are coming off great years. Yeah. Uh, you obviously coming off um, fight of the year, ESPN's fight of the year, everyone's fight of the year. It was an insane fight against Duho Choi. T tell me, man, what when you're in a fight like that, do you know that, like, what's going through your mind? When, when I mean, you're hitting him with everything you got. He's standing there. He's giving it back. What, what's what's happening in your mind when that's? Well, people were asking me if I knew it was a great fight, and I and I was oblivious to that. <laughs> I was just trying to make him quit. Uh, I was getting frustrated that he wouldn't quit, you know. So I remember almost like hitting him with some combinations, and almost like I was trying to look over my shoulder at the referee to be like, bro. <laughs> but every time I would like start to turn, I'd see that he was already coming back, and that is like. It was baffling to me. Uh, he's got a, he's got the heart of a warrior, and uh, I was just happy that we were able to put on such a great fight on a card that was supposed to not be that good and not getting the hype. And so we we delivered, and that's that's our jobs, and uh, we did that, and I'm proud of it. Oh, it was an excellent performance. Thank you. Just as a fan, that was it yeah. was an amazing performance. Um, let's talk about your division, featherweight division. Kind of craziness going on with that whole thing. Um, first. You know, Conor McGregor became a two-time world champion, but you know he hadn't defended the belt in yeah. over a year. Never has defended the belt, actually. You know what? What? What's your take on that situation? Um, well, I'm glad that they stripped him. You know, I think what he did by moving up and doing that was awesome. Uh, you know, it's something that hadn't been done before. Um, but I think it was the right thing to do to, to take the belt. They, I think they should have did it right when they said instead of when the fight of 206 pulled out. It kind of a lot of people thought that it was just weird. And, and I think that it's because they didn't do it right away. And um, it just wasn't fair for the whole division, you know. We're all fighting for stuff, and if he wants to move on, he was the champ, he could do what he wants, and he did. And um, we have to move on, you know, the division has to move on. If he wants to come back to 45, you know, 145, so be it. But, uh, you know, for the division, for all of us who are still there, we gotta keep fighting. And, uh, you know, now I'm hoping Aldo and Holloway throw down and I get the winner of that. So um, that's exciting. I was just going to ask you, so the, the Aldo Holloway thing, do you, I, 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 what's going on with that? I mean, as far as what, what you know, I mean, Aldo, I know, recently said something about he may be fighting for an interim lightweight championship. His, obviously, main goal is to fight Conor again. Yeah. But now, then he's going to kind of keep the, the gym, ho the, the, the division hostage. Yeah. What, what's your take on that whole Holloway-Aldo situation? Well, luckily, we now we have two belts in the division, a, a regular one and an interim one. And, uh, you know, people want to talk crap about whether there's an interim belt, it's like, who cares? Like, it, it gets the big fights happening, you know? And so uh, now that there's two belts, if one guy's not fighting, then the other one needs to fight. And so that means more of a chance for me to fight a uh, big fight. And so uh, I've been in a division for so long. I've been waiting my turn whenever it's, when I whenever I've been winning and it hasn't been, you know, come to me. So it's like somebody in my position who's been with the, the company for 10 years and never had an opportunity to fight for a belt. It's like, sometimes it, it's not about skill, it's about timing, you know, and it sucks. So uh, I think that if one of them, if they're, they're not gonna fight, that I'll probably be fighting one of those two. And, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll be glad for the opportunity and I'll, I'll, you know, whether it's an interim or regular belt, I'll cherish it and uh, look, look to, to keep climbing and, and, you know, look for bigger accomplishments. No, definitely. And, and I, I was looking at the uh, rankings, and everyone above you would, would be all rematches for you. Yeah. There's um, Lamas, Holloway, Aldo. Yeah. Um, is there, I mean, obviously you're, you're looking at the champions. Is there one guy specifically that you're like, that's the guy I want, that's the next fight? Or are you, and are you going to wait for that fight? Or are you kind of like, I'll take kind of, I mean, Duho Choi was ranked under you, yeah. and you fought him. Yeah. You know, is all that. My, my last three opponents were all ranked, right. but they were lower. And I knew, I knew that that was going to happen because. 
you know, they're not really keen on doing rematches unless it's for a belt and stuff like that. Just because people go, people just assume that the same thing is going to happen. And a lot of times it does. So I, I get that. Um, there's nobody right now out of the out of the guys that I've lost to that I want to fight uh, and like bad. It's just that all of them I want to fight, right. you know, and whoever's in the position to, that I have the most to gain out, out of it, that's who I want. So if they offer me Aldo or Holloway, those are the first two that I want back, you know? And uh, if I can't get those, then, then it'll go down the line. So it's whatever is the most to offer, uh, I want those fights back. Definitely want to get your take, man. Um, Ronda Rousey had a devastating loss to Amanda Nunes, uh, 46 seconds or something like that. What was your kind of evaluation of, of that fight and her whole situation that's going on with her? Uh, I think that when she was starting to make all the demands, it kind of showed that you know, she wasn't really there mentally to, uh, to us fighters. Um, I work with a sports psychologist about, you know, getting back in there and not dwelling on um, the negative things and the, the irrelevant things. Like, these are things that we all do. I, uh, I think it sucks because Rhonda did a lot of great things for the sport, and there's a few things that she did that makes a lot of fighters not like her. Um, and it's things like refuse to do media. That's something we all have to do, we all hate doing. So I, we didn't appreciate that. Um, I think that she shouldn't have taken a big fight. I think she should have taken a warm up fight. Um, I think she probably would feel that way now. Um, uh, but you know, that's the biggest thing. For me, it's like coming back from a loss shows who you are. And if she can come back from two losses, that even shows more. So I, I hope that she fights again. Um, I hope that she does find some, some new training and, and, and revamp the way she trained. I think that uh, sometimes you're ahead of the curve and then like when I was on my, my win streak and then I lost back to back, I felt like I was ahead of the curve and then all of a sudden the game was changing again oh, and, then, and then all of a sudden you're behind and you have to re reinvent yourself and that's what I've been doing. And so this game changes so fast. So. You have to be humble. You have to. You have to be able to be on the cutting edge, or you're going to be left behind really quick. I uh, definitely want to ask you. You talked about changing camps. John Jones kind of was vocal about that as well. I spoke to him yesterday. He seemed in good spirits. You know, he's very anxious to get back. When the UFC 200 thing happened, did you speak to him after that? What was kind of his mental status after that? And and when do you think we'll, we will see him back? Uh, he was really bummed out. All the coaches too. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, he he's uh, he's a big boy, and he, you know he needs to always res accept his responsibilities, and uh, it's gonna make him who he is. He's he's been probably the the most dominant fighter we've ever seen. I mean, the the guys that he's fought and everything. I think Demetrius is right there as far as dominant, but I don't think he's fought the names that that John has and 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 finished them and stuff like that. So I think John is just the best, you know, and. Uh, I think it, it saddens a lot of fans to, to see him not be in there. But th those are uh, things that he needs to work out and, and things that, that, that he has to deal with as a man. And uh, I think he'll get it right, and I think he'll come back, and I, I think he'll do great. I really hope that he moves up to heavyweight and just starts fresh because uh, that, that just seems to be, like, not only the safest move, but, like, the most exciting move. No, he's a night. He's enormous too. <laughs> He's like yeah. a big, big boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, lastly, I want you to talk about Michael Bisbing, your partner here in this yeah. gym. Had an amazing year. He's, you know, fighter of the year, ESPN. Talk about his year and, and kind of just having this partnership with, you know, it's just a great team with you two. Yeah, it was funny because we found out we were going to partner up like right before we found out he was going to get the title fight. And uh, then he got the title fight. They beat my manager. We're like, you know, it's possible he wins this, you know? <laughs> and uh, obviously, short notice, he was fighting Luke Rockhold, who was destroying people at the time. And then he won. Me and my managers looked at each other like, this is great for the gym. <laughs> and then uh, I started uh, getting right back on track and, and doing what I do. And uh, it's been a really great year for both of us. And I really feel that it's it's uh, comes to us both really putting good out there into the world and really, you know, trying to better ourselves as, as fighters and humans. Definitely, man. Well, thank you so much for the time, man. Really appreciate it. Excited to see you back in the ring. I know you have to kind of play the waiting game a little bit with that whole situation, but uh, but excited to see you. Thank you so much, Cup. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank hey, you, man. guys, come down, check out my new gym, UFC Gym Costa Mesa. It's an amazing facility. We'd love to have you. Appreciate it.
And check them out uh, on Instagram, UFC Costa Mesa. You guys, Facebook, UFC Costa yeah. Mesa, all that, right? Yep. And uh, Cub, you can follow Cub. Cub Swanson. That's it. On everything. <laughs> on everything. Easy. <laughs> Thank you so much, brother. All Appreciate right. it. Thanks. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. <laughs>